Carlsbad, this is Kamara and Mr. T, and today we're going to be doing what witch art. That means what will you use around your home to create the art, and which part of your brain are you going to use to bring this art to life? Now, this is how it goes. You're going to find anything you want around the house that is smaller than your hand. If it's too big, it probably won't fit on a piece of paper. So you could use something like a key, you could use a quarter, you could use a rock. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be using a rock today, I think. I've got a couple different rocks to choose from. You'll have to see which one I end up choosing and Mr. T's got some very cool things that he's going to use. So the whole idea is we take these items and we transform them into something else. So right now, this rock is circular. What can we change it into? Maybe it's the base for a butterfly. This is the body, and then here are the wings. In a minute, you'll see a couple different examples, and then we'll get started. I would love to see the different types of creations that you guys have put together, so please feel free to send them over to the city of Carlsbad so we can check out your art. See you in a few. All right, my artists, I hope that you have collected everything that you need in order to do your amazing art today. As you can see on our table here, I've collected quite a few things that I think are pretty interesting and can be transformed with the help of my imagination. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. I've got all of my pencils, different colors, different shapes, and like I said, it doesn't matter what you use at home. Maybe you've got a really tiny pencil with some tape on it, and it's got maybe two or three uses left. That's just fine. Maybe you've got just a blue pencil. That's fine too. Whatever it is that you have is going to work just fine with our art today. So make sure you've got pencils handy. And what do you need if you have a pencil? If it's not sharpened, you definitely need your pencil sharpener. But sometimes you get them and they're already sharpened like this one here and you're ready to go. Now let's see what we've got on the table. We've got a couple different paint brushes. That's a pretty fun one. We've got this guy here. Uh, what's this? It looks like we've got some tape. How many of you have tape at home? We use that to do all sorts of fun things. Like drop it on the floor and make a lot of noise. I bet you guys are making a ton of noise right now. And that's good. Let's see, we've got rocks. We've got this very cool smooth rock. We've got this rock here that's a little bit more shiny. It almost looks like a butterfly wing. If you guys have been outside in your garden or maybe just on a walk and you've seen butterflies flying around, this kind of looks like a butterfly wing. It's got that iridescence to it. We've got this very cool rock right here that is almost like an arrowhead. It's got a cool pointed tip here. It's got some neat colors going through it. I like to go out and find rocks anytime I get a chance, especially at the beach. We've got a connector here. We've got tweezers, gray tweezers. And last but not least, we've got a pair of scissors and a key. So for most of you, a lot of these items are familiar, which means you've probably got them at home but you might have something different too. So whatever it is you've got, let's get ready to draw. For myself today, I think I'm going to start with this nice and smooth rock. I like it because it's very circular, which we can do a lot of cool things with. So before we get started, 
think in your mind what sort of objects have circles in them. Are there any animals that you could draw that start with circles? Are there things around your house? Can you create a monster with this? Can you create a food? What can you do? Let's see what I'm going to do. I'm gonna move all my extra items to the side right now. And I'm gonna put my rock in the center. So I'm going to start by making some circles. The first circle I'm gonna draw at the bottom is going to be the biggest circle in my picture. So that's going to be at the bottom. If you have something to trace, um, like a Coke can or any kind of small um, juice, you can use the bottom of it to um, outline, just like the bottom of this cup. It's a nice circle, so you can put that down on your paper to create an even better circle. Now the next one that I'm going to do is gonna go right on top of the other circle. So now we've got two circles on top of each other. Can you think of what this is starting to come together to make? We'll put my rock at the top, just in the center there. So now we've got three circles, one, two, and three. Let's see, what am I gonna add next? We're going to add some smaller circles here going down the center. I've got three so far. How about we do one more? So how many circles do we have on this page all together? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles. Seven circles to create. What? We don't know yet. We're still going. All right. So let's take a break from the circles and we're going to use some simple lines. One line on the side, one on this side. Do we know what we're creating yet? Let's keep going. Let's add three more lines right there. And three lines on the side right there. Do you know what's going on? Do you know what we have yet? All right. What are we going to add to the top? Let's see. A line here. We're going to bring it together and take it up and across and down. Got a little hat. Got a little hat on top of our small circle. Does anyone have a guess what it is? All right, if you have a guess, scream it out to the top of your lungs. I heard some of you, let's try it one more time. Scream it as loud as you can. What do you think this item is? If you said a hamburger, you would be incorrect, but that sounds delicious. It is in fact a snowman. We are making a snowman. So we've got our circles, we've got our arms, because when you're making a snowman, you need your sticks. And what else does a snowman need? He needs a carrot nose. So you can have him going to the side with his carrot nose. And what else does he need? A broom. So you can do a broom here on the side that he has by coming straight down. And then you're gonna do just a little bit of a separation between the broomstick and the bristles. And you'll take that down and come right across here. Now the bristles have got to be kind of unruly like our hair is sometimes in the morning. So let's just fill that in. And you can fill this in as much as you want. Perfect. So we've done our simple project with our simple circle with our smooth rock and we created a snowman. 
Now, some of you probably created something different, which is just fine. And I, like I said, I'd love to see it. So please send those over to the city of Carlsbad so we can see what it is that you created. Um, this is something that you can do with anything circular, but you don't have to just make a snowman. You can make anything that your imagination can come up with. This is just what we worked on for our first project to get you warmed up. Okay, so before we move on to our more advanced art, let's do one more quick little project. Let's make this guy disappear. Magic, guys, it was magic. We'll put our rock back here and let's get our next piece of paper ready. Okay, what am I going to choose next? Will it be the iridescent rock? Will it be the scissors? Will it be the paintbrush that I've never used to paint in my home at all? It's very clean. I think it's gonna be the key. I like the key. It's pretty fun. All right, how many of you have keys at home? I bet your parents have keys. You might have a key to get into your house, maybe to start your car one that keeps your houses and your doors and maybe even cool trinket boxes locked up and all safe. And keys come in all different sizes. I really love keys. I think they're very neat. This one is pretty small. If I take my hand and put it just in the center, you can see it's not very big. It's almost the size of my pinky, which is pretty tiny compared to the rest of my hand. So I'm going to put it down in the center of our paper. Now for two seconds, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine the key in your head, what it looks like, what color it is, and I want you to slowly let it transform into something completely different. Let it grow from the shape of the key. So I thought it might be kind of fun to use this key to draw one of my favorite animals in the entire world. And that's the octopus. Now what's cool about the octopus is it's very smart. The octopus is incredibly smart. It's been known to sneak out of aquarium enclosures through very, very tiny openings. Sometimes go and visit other fish. In the wild, the octopus can change and turn different colors. And some of you might know this, what does the octopus do when it's scared. All right, I'm gonna give you three seconds to yell to the top of your lungs, what does the octopus do when it's scared? Three, two, one, scream, what does it do? The octopus squirts ink. It just squirts ink when it is scared and it zooms away, which is pretty cool. I mean, I I don't wanna do that when I get scared. Sometimes I get scared a lot, so I wouldn't want anyone to know, but that's okay. The octopus is a super cool animal. So as you can see, there's tons of different legs on our octopus. We can even create the world that our octopus is in. Do some waves at the top and the waves are just created by taking our pencil and going up and making a little bit of a point and coming back down. And you can make these waves super big. You can make a huge wave, a little wave. You can add the sun up here. And if you've got colored pencils, you can go ahead and make those different colors. 
just like that. And if you have time, you can go ahead and add some fish to your page. This one's smiling, he's having a pretty good day. So that is the start of our simple art. And as I said, you guys might have created something that looks incredibly different for me. And that's amazing. I'm so excited to see what you've created and you know what's going to happen next. You are going to graduate to Mr. T and he is going to do some very cool art with you. So get your next item ready so that you can draw along. All right, guys, see you in two seconds. Hello, Carlsbad. All right, welcome to the intermediate portion of the uh, uh, drawing with random stuff video. So we got some random stuff. I've found this uh, little brick here for to plug in your phone. So I'm gonna use that. Uh, this is Mr. T by the way. And I saw that Miss K already used some keys, but I'm gonna use two keys. All right, so two keys now we are doubling how much keys we are using all right so there we go that looks all right uh now what do you see there uh it might be a bird or something it might be a spaceship but i'm seeing some sort of a, a dragon i think that's where i'm gonna go with this so we're gonna use multiple objects this time around. I'm gonna make this the head. These are gonna be some wings because uh, our dragon can fly. So let's see, what should we start with first? I'll give him a, a body. I guess he's gotta have his neck here. Just go down to the wings, kind of make the wings attach to the body. There we go. And we can bring the wings down, add some more depth to them. And why don't we give them some claws on the end of those wings? There we go. Now he's got more claws on the left hand than he does on the right, but it doesn't matter. He's a dragon, who cares? Uh, let's give him a belly and then some legs so he can stand. All right. Let's finish this off. So he's right there. There we go. Okay. Connect his chest down there to fill out these wings. Just add a little bit of detail. And now he's looking pretty good. I think he needs, his head's falling off, so it's seen better days. But you can just move the wings back, put the head wherever you want it. You can look around. It looks a little too short. There we go. Now let's give him some eyes. Okay. Not too bad. Let's shorten those eyes, make them a little more even. There go. It kind of looks like a, a monster duck. But don't worry, he'll be a dragon. So how do we make him look more like a dragon? Let's give him some more claws down here. There we go. Okay, and dinosaurs and dragons and lizards, they always kind of have this underbelly section. So let's just draw that in so people know that he is indeed a dragon. Some scales on his body there. And so this is his snout. 
Uh, our dragon doesn't have a tail though, so I'm going to use this headphone jack, stick it right there, and use that as our dragon's tail. And I'm going to add some spikes to it, because dragon isn't much of a dragon if he doesn't have some spikes. So just little tiny triangles. There we go. I wouldn't want to run into this guy in the dark, let me tell you that. Okay, what else can we do here? I have a guitar pick. And what's a dragon if he's not breathing fire? So let's just throw that there. Fix his tail. And now our dragon, he's flying, he's got a tail, and he is breathing fire. Let's make this fire a little more appropriate. Okay, so we'll just add some some flames coming out here. And on the bottom too. More triangles. There we go. And when you make fire, there's always different levels to it. So you want to kind of give it a little bit more texture to show how how hot it actually is. There we go. We got a fire breathing dragon. My gosh, his head looks a little empty, so I'm just gonna fill it out. Give him some some sort of cranium here at the top of his head. So it looks like his mouth is actually connected to his body. There we go some eyebrows lying down there. And there we have it. That's a pretty vicious dragon, if you ask me. Now uh, that we have our full-on dragon, we can add some little details like shadows. So I just like to add lines across the, the dragon or whatever animal or monster, whatever you might be drawing. So let's say, here's the fire. So the fire is illuminating our dragon. Therefore, this side, his right side, should be lit up because the fire is bright. So any shadows are gonna be coming from the opposite side on his left here. So to make shadows in kind of like a cartoony, comic book-esque way, you can just draw some straight lines along the other lines that you have and it really makes a big difference in filling out a, uh, a character and so there'd be a shadow here underneath his wings and here's his belly so his belly is blocking the light from his leg there we'd have a shadow underneath here And it's these little details that really make uh, a drawing come to life. And so for these wings, let's connect his claws up there. And these will kind of be the, the fleshy part, like a bat's wings. Do some more shadows under there. Bring the wing up. More shadow there and underneath the wing. And now he's starting to look like he's kind of coming off the page a little bit. That's more what we want to see. Get some shadows under here because the light is coming from up above. And on the side of his face here. Right, not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. What do you guys think? I had fun, I hope you did too. So thanks for drawing with me, Carl's Band.